Traces was a 3D software developed in the late 80s by Tan Rosendahl, who you probably know was the founder of the Dutch animation studio Neo Geo. The story began between 1988 and 1989, when Rosendahl created Traces around an in-house tool for 3D animation and rendering. At the time, and anyone who didn't live around that time, probably don't know that affordable 3D software for personal computers were very limited, as opposed to current 3D software. Early Amiga 3D programs lacked features like proper texture mapping and high-end 3D systems, such as Alias, Wavefront, etc., which ran on expensive workstations. Rosendell was a self-taught programmer, who saw the opportunity to build a custom ray tracer on the Amiga to meet Neo Geo's needs. As he later noted, ray tracers are very easy to code, especially compared to Skyline systems, and this made it feasible to develop his own 3D software on his home hardware. This led to the birth of Traces, a name reflecting its ray tracing core, which would become the predecessor of Blender. As you might expect, Neo Geo began using Traces for animation projects, by 1989, the studio quickly grew into the largest 3D animation company in the Netherlands, winning awards for its work. Tan Rosendahl developed Traces initially on the Amiga, and later ported it to more powerful systems at Neo Geo. The first version of Traces were written in GFA Basic on the Amiga, with performance-critical routines and hand-optimized in assembly languages. This choice actually allowed for rapid development though it also imposed limitations when it came to speed. Rosendell's business partner and the co-founder of Neo Geo, Frank Van Beek, contributed significantly in this phase. Frank was a more experienced coder who taught Rosendell a lot, focusing on the 2D and GUI coding side of things, while Tan handled the 3D algorithms. In 1991, as Neo Geo took more complex projects, Rosendell decided to migrate traces to silicon graphics, or SGI workstations for greater power and stability. But he had to learn C first, in order to rewrite and port the code from the Amiga to SGI. The first SGI port was completed in the summer of 1991 on an SGI workstation to leverage 24-bit graphics and a more robust Unix environment. And in fact, this transition solved many of the Amiga's drawbacks. And for Rosendell and his partner, it was such a relief to have the stability and performance that the SGI offered. Traces evolved through Neo Geo's early 90s production years, with Rosendell and his small team improving the software as needed. By 1993 and 1994, Traces has grown into a fairly sophisticated 3D suite for its time, but there was a problem. It was reaching the limit of its early design. So in 1995, Tan made the decision to replace Traces with a new, from scratch 3D application, which was also an in-house 3D creation tool that would be more powerful and more flexible. This new project was codenamed Blender. Rosendell described its code base as a near fully recoded successor to Traces, indicating that while Blender was inspired by Traces and even initially able to reuse some of its assets and workflows, it was essentially a fresh implementation. Traces was used in production at Neo Geo up until that point after which Blender took over as the studio's primary 3D software, and it remained an internal tool exclusive to Neo Geo. It was only decades later when the Amiga version of Traces finally was made available to the public as a historical artifact. The question now is, why didn't they just further develop Traces into becoming something similar to Blender instead of creating Blender from scratch? You see, by 1994, it was clear to Tom Rosendahl, Traces, for all its success at Neo Geo, needed a complete overhaul to meet new challenges. So in 1995, he began developing a new in-house 3D software, and this project, as we said before, will become Blender. The first problem was technical limitation in the core of the software. Traces had its roots in basic code and the Amiga era, and even with the later C port to SGI, it carried design constraints that limited further innovation. The architecture was not easily extensible for the next generation of features. For example, a more interactive GUI or support for emerging techniques. Rosendale decided that a near-complete rewrite was necessary, and Blender was described 
as being almost entirely new code compared to traces. Starting fresh in C and C++, allowed Blender to be more modular, performant, and ready for future platforms, like Windows, which Blender was later ported to, expanding beyond SGI. In short, Blender was conceived as a more modern, robust successor that could do things traces just couldn't. Another reason is competition. The early 1990s brought rival Levi's in expectations for 3D graphics quality. Neo Geo's clients were beginning to expect true 24-bit color, higher resolutions, and more complex animations. The kind of output that Viral Studios, using Alias or Softimize software on SGI hardware could achieve. Ton recognized that to match industry standards, he either had to purchase very expensive commercial 3D packages or significantly upgrade his own software, so he opted for the latter. Blender was envisioned to incorporate more interactive modeling and animation tools, a fully GUI-driven interface and efficient previewing, things that could streamline making changes to projects, and indeed, a key motivation was to solve the frustration of clients requesting numerous changes later in the project. The problem with traces was tweaking an animation rendering could be painful, whereas Blender was designed to make interactive changes far easier. For example, Blender 1.0 introduced an innovative single window interface that a user could subdivide into multiple views or panels at will, improving flexibility, especially when compared to Trace's single view pop-up menus. This change made it much easier to work on different aspects of a scene, and you could do that concurrently, view in 3D, timeline, buttons, etc. in one screen, thereby speeding the workflow when modifications were needed. Another technical reason was that, while Traces had been ported to SGI, Blender was built from day one to fully leverage OpenGL and IrisGL and the GUI capabilities of that platform, and to be portable. By running Blender in C and C++, and using modern graphics libraries, Rosendale ensured it could run not only on SGI, but also on Windows, Linux, etc. In fact, Blender was publicly released of multiple operating systems by 1998. Traces being tied to Omega and SGI and older coding practices was less adaptable. Additionally, Blender score was optimized for better performance on new hardware, and this is crucial as scene complexity and rendering demands actually increased over time. Initially, Blender was still meant as an internal tool for Neo Geo, but it was built with an eye toward potential wider use. Neo Geo was moving into interactive 3D, for example experimenting with game consoles. Ton even had a prototype of Blender's engine running on the PlayStation 1 by 1997. The company's growth and eventual plans hinted at the possibility of marketing their software for the public. So in 1998, after Neo Geo's dissolution, Ton and Frank Van Beek founded Not A Number to commercialize Blender. This trajectory was only possible because Blender was built as a new, standalone product distinct from Traces, which was the smart move in hindsight, I would say. Essentially, Traces was never designed for external release, but Blender was structured from the start to be a professional-grade application that could be distributed. The move to Blender also coincided with changes in the company. Neo Geo's animation business was winding down by 1997, and Ton pivoted to focus on software development full-time, which culminated in Blender's public launch. In practical terms, the transition happened swiftly. Tom wrote the first Blender source files on January 2nd, 1994, which is considered Blender's birthday, and by January 1995, Blender 1.0 was launched internally on Neo Geo's SGI systems. Blender effectively replaced traces in production by 1995, and Neo Geo's artists switched over to the new software. You see, Blender retained the core functionality that was required in the studio, like modeling, animation, rendering, and so on, but introduced many improvements in addition to a fresh UI. From the outside, one could view Blender as Traces 2.0, or the next generation. Indeed, Blender was literally based on Traces and other tools that Neo Geo had already written, but it went far beyond what Traces could do positioning Blender to carry Neo Geo and later the Blender community into the late 90s, the early 2000s, and beyond.
to where we are now, which I would say it is a great time and place to be. And there you have it guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you guys very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.